Hi guys, welcome back to my channel. My name is Raina. If you're new here, then welcome and welcome to today's sunscreen review. I haven't been doing a sunscreen review uh, for a little while. So this time I have reviewed six Asian sunscreens and we're going to talk each individual of them. Unlike how I usually rank them from my least favorite to my favorite, this time I'm going to give each one of the sunscreen a tag so you can search for the best suitable tag for you to go pick it up. If you somewhat love me watching sunscreen reviews, you will know I have a whole playlist for this year as well as for last year. So make sure to leave all of them down in the description box below. And my most recent tinted sunscreen review is already available. So if you're someone just loving a little bit of a tint in the sunscreen so it can save you a couple of steps when you're heading out the door, don't forget to check that video out. Without further ado, let's just dive into today's video. And don't forget if you enjoyed today's video, thumbs up and consider subscribing down below. So the first one we're going to talk about is the At Your House Surprise Mild Watery Lotion. This one got SPF 50 plus, PA plus plus plus. So unlike Western sunscreen, the Asian sunscreen will give you this PA value instead of say board spectrum. So if you see a PA, you see a SPF, you know it covers UVA and UVB. Obviously PA plus, the more the pluses, the more the better protection. The SPF is the same as the SPF that we see for all the other sunscreen here in Australia. Unfortunately, here in Australia, I don't think none of these were approved by TGA. So if you somewhere really rely on the regulation here in Australia, then obviously these are something you don't even have to consider because they're all coming from Asia. Like brands, some are approved by certain, like maybe FDA or the European regulations, but I'm pretty sure that I can't find any of this here in Australia websites. You have to go for Yet Style, Stylevana, or other websites to purchase, which I will link the ones that I can found down in the description just in case you want to purchase or you want to have a look. Some of the links might be affiliated. Um, I will leave a little abstract mark so you know. Just make it easier for you to have a look and then you can decide to search it uh, for yourself. Back to the sunscreen. This one is 50 grams and price wise is around $16 here in Australia. Like all the dollars that I've already converted into Australian dollars. So I think it's a good price. The texture of the sunscreen is quite runny, so it's one of those watery, really easy to absorb into your skin. It does leave a little bit of shine, I'll say, if you have really bad undertone or you have really bad natural skin condition, it may kind of accentuate it because that shiny is just sort of emphasized a little bit. If not, then I don't think you'll be bummed by the tiny bit of shiny finish. And I had no steam, no irritation while I using it and it works perfectly well without makeup. However, when I use it with makeup, it caused quite a bit of peeling around my temple, around my lip, around my chin, the majority places around my face, let's to be honest. So this is definitely a sunscreen that I use when I don't apply makeup, saying if I'm going outdoor for archery, then I don't worry about makeup, this is good to go. If you're someone applying makeup on a daily basis, I would suggest you stay away from this one, but consider have a look of this uh, Japanese sunscreen. This is the Free Plus UV Protector SPF 25 PA++. I believe Free Plus is a small brand under the big umbrella brand Cannibal. This one is 50 mils and the retail price is around $30. So first it's like double the price compared to Etchy House, where Etchy House in Korea is also well known as a really affordable brand. And this one is super, super runny that you can literally hear there is watery in here compared to Etchy House. It's still kind of those runny but still lotion texture. Very, very liquidy and just works like a primer. When you first apply it to your face, it gives a nice shine, but you just let it set, let it absorb. Couple seconds, maybe 30 seconds, let's be honest, it will go into matte finish. And then you can actually do a couple layers if you reckon it's too runny that you want to have a better protection. No steam, no irritation. It works perfectly with makeup because how everything just absorbs into your skin and mattifies it. It's not like a full matte, but it becomes invisible. Like it feels like you haven't applied anything. Your face is still just the same if you're not applying any sunscreen. So I reckon this is a really good one for a everyday office work people using it, not for outdoor because you only got SPF 25. But if you only go in the morning and when you finish work in the 
like during the evening time, that shorter period, I think it's gonna be all right. And plus, doesn't matter, doesn't really matter what sunscreen that you use in the morning, even if it's an SPF a thousand. By the time it's evening, five o'clock, the sunscreen that I apply in the morning not gonna be effective at all, or pretty much nothing left for the five o'clock anyway. So might as well use something lightweight and easy absorb and make your makeup look good all day. So I've really been loving this on the day when I go to work where I need a little bit of makeup. As we get into the summer here in Australia, if you especially having oily skin, you found it so much harder to apply sunscreen because it's just another layer of unbreathable sort of cream or lotion or whatever you try on your face and it actually makes the oily skin goes even more oily and sometimes even clock into the pores. I do have one that I think is really good for um, oily skins. I have a little travel size but I actually used up a whole big um, bottle of this before, even before I was starting testing makeup. This is the Kos Sekisi, I don't think I got this name right. White UV Emotion SPF Plus PA Plus 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 Plus. So we got four pluses. This one retail price that I found is around twenty six dollars for twenty five grams, which is definitely more expensive compared to if I buy them in China. I remember it was around twenty dollars for twenty five grams, but maybe I also got a little like a gift along. It's like a gift pack, so I get definitely got more with less the price that I paid. But this is just what it is because we're here in Australia and we're purchasing overseas brands. So that's just something that we have to leave or take. This one comes with a nice lotion texture and it does contain a bit of denatured alcohol which makes it super quick to be absorbed into your skin and leave that nice and cool feeling afterwards. I've been loving it during the summertime. Not every day but if it's really hot and I know I'm already like melting when I wake up, this is definitely something I'll go for. I don't mind having denatured alcohol for a couple days, as long as it's not like 365 days in a year, then I'll be fine. Especially for oily skin people when you're hating, wanting to skip the sunscreen step, just go with this one. It gives you a great protection. And I have no shine after using this, it just absorbs into your skin nicely. I don't think it will be very friendly for sensitive skins however, so just bear in mind and do patch test behind your ears and it works perfectly well with makeup. Like I said, I've purchased another travel size just to show you in front of the camera in terms of the texture etc, but I've used that whole bottle myself. If I ever get the chance visiting some Asian countries or go back to China, visit my family and friends, I will definitely pick another one of these up because I think it's really good for the summertime when I just need a bit of a cooling sensation while I'm applying sunscreen. While we're talking Japanese brands, we might as well go this can make sunscreen as well. This is their Mermaid Shield Gel UV SPF 50 plus PA plus 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 plus. This one is for face as well as for body. However, we only have 40 grams here and this one retails around $16. I think the size for this one is gonna be perfect if you're going outside for travel for your face, maybe for a couple of usage for your body, but it's not one of those big value packs that you can just lather on your body for everyone in the family. First of all, I do really love this packaging. I think packaging wise, this is my favorite. And then my second favorite is probably the Etchu House ones. I just like, you know, a little bit of something different compared to other, you know, standard sunscreen. This is a lotion texture and it gives a little bit of shiny finish after use it just by itself. But it had no stinging, no irritation to be noticed around my face and it works perfectly with makeup and I don't feel any heaviness or anything. The shine is probably the only downside but it was so minimum I don't think it's gonna be a problem even you have a bit of skin condition underneath I don't think accentuated as much as the Atri House one this I reckon is a truly all type skin can be used to sunscreen this one you can definitely purchase from your style that's where I pick it up and I do have a coupon code that you can save a little bit even as a tiny bit every cent count the other one that I think is really good, that's suitable for all skin type, is also a um, Japanese sunscreen. This is their UV Acism, oh, I actually don't know, it's like their technology. 
This is the SPF 50 plus PA plus 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 sunscreen. This is again a very runny lotion. I think you can hear it. It's like watery. Uh, this one retails around thirty dollars for sixty five mils. So far, this is the biggest sunscreen that I have reviewed among all the other ones. Again, super, super runny, on par with these ones. They're all very, very runny texture, and I have no shine afterwards. Absorbs into the skin very, very quick. I have no irritation, and I have no stinging notice around my face. Because this one having a higher SPF, I actually think comparing the two, they all having very runny texture and finishes, this is gonna be a better option. I do think this is also easier to get, shipped to Australia compared to the free plus. I find, again, I'll have the links down in the description below, so check them out. They will have the most updated ones while I was editing the video. It works perfectly well with makeup. I just have no trouble. You hear a lot of these sunscreen have only one or two things different to the other. Mainly it's the texture, whether it's workable with makeup, plus their finishes. Not like some of the Australian or other Western sunscreen, they have huge white casts. None of these having white casts because it's just so good. By saying that, I do have one that I think is maybe a little bit of fail for me. That is the Centella Madagascar Air Fit Sunscreen Plus SPF Plus. FPS 50 plus PA plus 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 by the brand Skin 1004. I believe this is their new formula. The old formula, which I watch Cassandra reviewed it and she really, really loved it. And I had high hopes for this one. So let's go through this one step by step. First, it is a lotion-y texture. Still on the runnier side, but when you apply it onto your face, you notice it takes a little while to absorb into your skin. And it is also a little bit hard to blend. Considering the texture, I would assume it's gonna be quite easy to get into the skin, but not. You have to really rub and get, let it set into your skin. Also, this one gives me a little bit of white cast. Like I said, most of the Asian sunscreen, there's no white cast, but this one, there definitely a little bit of white cast that I've noticed. There's no stinging, no irritation that I've noticed, but it does not work well with makeup. I think it has something to do with the fact that it takes too long to be blended. I want to actually apply the adequate amount. Maybe not everything get into the skin. Like some of it just was sitting on the surface. When it's sitting on the surface and I rub with my primer and my foundation and then my cream, contour, etc., it just peels off a little bit. So. I don't think I will repurchase this for sure. And among the two that's not working well with sun, uh, with makeup, I prefer actually has a little bit better because at least it absorbs quickly into the skin and applies easier and there's no white cast. Uh, I forgot to mention the price. This one is around $13 for 50 ml. So it's a good, nice price. Uh, and also a very lovely like slim bottle. I do actually quite enjoy this design as well. Nice, slim, simple, but I just don't think it's one of my favorite among all the six that I reviewed. This could be my least favorite, unfortunately. So I really wanted to try the one that before they changed the formula because apparently that one was a very great product and has lo a lots of winning points and I don't know why they changed the formula and it ended up being like this. Anyway, that is all for today's um, sunscreen review. I hope you guys really enjoyed it. If you did, don't forget to give me a like and consider subscribe down below. If you ask me to pick one that I think is suitable for everyone and easy access, nice price point, you know, have all the points evaluated, I think the one that get the most score will be the Kenmec Mermaid sunscreen. This one is definitely easy access, relatively affordable price, can be used for face and body with or without makeup, with or without makeup, and there's no sting, no irritation, no white cast, and absorbs quickly into your skin with pretty much no shine. All right, that is all for today. Um, I hope you guys have a great day. Let's stay safe and stay positive, and I'll see you guys in my next video. Bye.